enough, that's why it didn't melt. Because usually it melts quite quickly. Also, if you use smaller marshmallows, you have a like smaller, larger surface area volume ratio. They get they get in there quite quickly. <laughs> Sorry, I finished it quite quickly. So that's brilliant. So, in terms of like what you're doing at the moment, so I know there's been quite a bit of especially in engineering. A lot of the engineers I've met, they're looking to go into med tech. So you're like you're working PhD for HR notes. How does that link to medicine? Like, because I think you can design reusable circuits yeah. and all. Yeah. In my master's project, I did. Them. Yeah. In my master's project, I did something related really to do biomedical optics, right. which was imaging using some photonics sensors and optical sensors, optical fiber sensors. Right. So because it's too expensive. It, it, it was very expensive. As a master student, the university wasn't sure if they wanted to invest in me in my right. project. So right. it was just a year project. Yeah. So yeah. I did everything based on software, software simulation, and on primarily on MATLAB. But in PhD, I had a different idea. But my supervisor told me if I could realize a software thing into reality, like this is one of the idea which I thought with my supervisor to work in it's the field of optical coherence tomography which is also called OCT. Yeah, yeah, so I think, I know like positron emission tomography, that's like PET scans with like, you put a radioactive bit of glucose, like some fluorescent, not fluorescent, yeah. but radioactive, yeah, tag uh -huh. glucose. Mm. Um, what does tomography mean actually? Yeah, so the, um, I was coming to that. Tomography is like slicing up images, so if I got a tissue, yeah. I get a 2D image, mm. 1D image is like, okay, I got a spike of right. some refractive index I am got like for example I've got one refractive index I've got two uh, material of two re refractive index yeah. yeah I pass a light it comes across the boundary it gets a spike right. this 1D right. tomography okay. okay so if 2D tomography is like 2D images and if I'm imaging some certain part of tissue yeah. or any part of body yeah yeah it forms 2D images slicing up so that's tomography so in optical coherence tomography we use a coherent beam of light that goes inside tissue, reflect back, gets interfered with the reference signal, and like generates an interference map. Right. That's called OCT. And what are you, in terms of medicine, how would you apply it? Where would it be applied? In a so possible? my simulation was based on a, a model of cornea. I, I actually devised a model of cornea. So cornea is the outermost layer of the eye, isn't it? The yeah, layer. there's a transparent layer of eye. Yeah. So it, it's called like variable layers, right. which has different factor windows. Yeah, yeah. Like Bowman's layer, epithelial, and some 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 kind of layer. So I what was the function? Model. How does it work? So, yeah, so, so with implant every, or? every different refractive index, you get a different spike. So you would actually build a map what's going around cornea. So my ah, because cornea does di it refracts light. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So diffract no refracts refract, light. Refract refracts light through so retina. Focuses it, then yeah. it goes through the yeah it goes through the cornea then into the lens which does the final focusing. Then it hits the rest so you get some light reflected back, and OCD is based on back scatter reflection. Right. What do you mean, sorry? Back scattering reflection. Back scattering reflection. Yeah. Refraction. Okay. Reflection. Reflection. Yeah. How does that work? What does it do? So I've got one beam of light going inside the eye. I'm, I'm having some reflection. Yeah. And I've got a plain beam of light which is not refractive, which is just, just a reflection from the beam of Right. Yes, yes, yes. So I interfere them. Right. Because uh, there are different factor indices in the cornea. Yeah. And I've got nothing here. They interfere and make a map. Right. Of different layers of cornea. Okay. So this has been like a really, really good technology because it's non-invasive. Non-invasive as it doesn't affect the tissue itself. Right. Otherwise, if I'm using X-ray or any laser, it affects the tissue directly. Yeah, DNA damage yeah. and cell yeah. damage. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it's just kind of imaging method. Right. So yeah. my project. It's one of the research ideas which my supervisor proposed me that I could build whole OCD in one chip. A whole OCD, OCD. OCD system in one they're chip. They're big. Usually they're big. Because it's usually big. Yeah, yeah. So and they're expensive. And you put them into one chip. That was the idea. One chip. So that can actually reduce the cost dramatically. And also everyone can have a handheld OCD in their home. So, for example, like you have a handheld. Um, what do you call it? Like you detect diabetes yeah, with yeah. such a puncher, or like a small chip, yeah, you small needle, chip, you put yeah. it, and you measure with a small strip. Yeah. So like that. So, so like that, we can have. A, and what's maybe not, not for eyes, maybe yeah. for skin, maybe for other diseases. So what sort of people would this machine, like this mini OCT, have been good for? Maybe for screening tests, like or screening what? of. Um, 
have you heard about like skin disorders? I'm not because I was like rashes, in the, uh, rashes kind of thing. Yeah, so yeah. if you have some allergies, so you can have the in wall rather having a micro micro what do you call it magnifying lens. Right. You can experiment with the witches and you say, oh, yeah, I, I have a hand at here at home. I ordered from Amazon. Okay, fine. That's pretty cool. But these days, OCD is quite cumbersome. They are big as a chair, big devices. So, and so you said, would you say in general with medicine? Yeah. You know, at the moment, all the machines are quite big. Like an endoscopy yeah. machine is really yeah. big. X-ray machines are big. Exactly. Do you think we're shifting towards an age where things are going to become smaller, or where do you think medical te technology is going to go? I know, like AI is having a big thing, but in terms of you, AI is also not 100 percent reliable. No. Because no. you need human intervention right. when it comes to medicine. Right. I think. Combining engineering and medicine, I would like, from my perspective, they are reaching a stage where all the devices, all the tests, all the medicines are available to everyone yeah. around the whole globe. Right. Because there are still many parts of country like who cannot afford even a basic ultrasound test because that's too expensive for them. Like like some in, people in do. Some, yeah. Some people do a fair amount of like villages in India. Yeah, yeah. People can't afford ultrasound tests no. for if a basic pregnancy test. People can't afford right. these kind of things. So. Right. If you ask me my perception of, of like <laughs> combining medicine and engineering, I think we, sh we are thriving for building those devices so to get to them to common people very easily right, so, so that they don't like, have to rely so things on. in the UK like x-ray, MRI, ultrasound, which we have everywhere, yeah. they're still saying in some countries that isn't even a thing. Like water, for example, we'd say having running water is like a luxury, but still a lot, like a, a huge part of the population of the world don't have running water. That's right. So you're saying right. the next step is basically implementing yeah. all of these into mm -hmm. Even population. CD scan is really expensive if you go for a CD scan. Yeah, because like it's a cutting edge technology, yeah. but it's so expensive that people they would rather live with the tumor or disease like in India. Like they, they can't afford it. Because otherwise the whole life savings that go to sort of spend on one thing. They think, do I feed my family or do I have one like, yeah, fine. So yeah, that was like one of the So how can they make it how can they make it cheaper? So you're saying you want to increase like the Because you integrate everything on a single chip or right. the size of a phone. Yeah. And you enclose within a box, right? And I got a patent. I commercialize the product, and yeah. the company starts manufacturing it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's got like it's with, with, commercial. You said like X rays and ultrasounds. Mm -hmm. You said there's a big problem where a lot of population don't even have access to it. So how do you think we can actually ma make it more accessible? Do we just mass produce and make it even cheaper, or because I know certain like that Siemens, is my aim actually to mass is, produce it, right? To commercial because I don't have an industry. I'm I'm gonna sell that if I if I make it. Yeah. If yeah. I have something, I'll make it. It's revolutionizing. I'm and gonna to sell mass it to, produce, to, to really mass be simple. Simple. To mass produce technology, like for example, look at Tesla. Mm. They've got a very, very complicated car. Compared to like a normal Volkswagen car, like a Mercedes, mm. a Tesla, they're ridiculously complicated. Uh -huh. and you know, the, you know the wheel arch of the Tesla. I think a normal car is like it's made from one bit of metal, and a Tesla it's made out of like nine different bits of metal. For what the same thing? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so like similar to that, like, and that's why Tesla are having so much trouble mass manufacturing because they've got so many complicated processes to mass manufacture so costly. You need very specialized robots, you need very specialized skills to start. Mm -hmm. So like that with medicine and medtech, well, do you feel as if it's similar to that? Or like mass production in general? Or even with the computer I've, I've, I've had easier. a discussion with one of uh, optometrists and he was saying, we don't have this thing because it's too expensive for us. To, even for optometrists, he's like a, He's got his own clinic. Yeah, he can't afford it. Right, it's too expensive. Around ten thousand pounds, fifteen thousand. That's pounds. in the UK as well. Yeah. Right. Or, yeah. So it's, no, OCD is not that readily available, and it's getting its place in the market these days in medicine. Right. Yeah, yeah. Previously, it was used just for like when it was discovered, it was used for usually eyes and, and having the any macular abnormalities in retina kind right. of stuff. Yeah. But yeah. they're expanding to OCD angiography. Polarization dependent OCD. So there are lots of OCD, but based on the same principle. But the Depending on the dif different feeds. So if I got a basic model, I got everything integrated on a little chip. Yeah. I've got a handheld thing, which is like really portable and everyone can everyone can use it. Yeah. So you have that thing, I commercialize it. Anyone can buy it. Right. And make use of it. So what you're saying is, like the for the OCT, for it, it's, like it's a simple. It's like a blank canvas it's a, to an extent, and you can very so much personalize take, it. Yeah. If I take a phone, cell yeah. phone, yeah, yeah. when it was launched, like only few people could afford it. And it was, uh, it was like a legacy that oh, I have got a telephone, right? Yes, but sorry. everyone has it now. 
everyone Smart has their use. So yeah, yeah. the cost actually decreased dramatically over the years, over the decade. Isn't there like a, there's a name of a curve, isn't there? It's like a law. Demand, demand and supply. Demand and supply. No, there's another one. Um, there's another law actually when it comes to when you yeah, have a new. Economists might know yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah. If you're an economist, do comment. <laughs> um, but I think when you have like a new type of product, initially it's very expensive. Yeah. But as you begin to mass produce it, as you begin to make people more buy it, they have their plus and minus, so the company makes, it makes better. more better, like enhance it. Because initially it's like a prototype, doesn't right. it? They're raising funds for the product, and then once you sort of mass produce it, mass producing that everyone can use, yeah. then people, more people buy it, demand increases, yeah. supply increases, it's like a cycle. It's the cost. That's, that that's pretty cool. Okay, fine. So OCTs in general, then. This is like wrap today's. Cause I need to go to lecture soon. But anyway, so OCTs in general. How would you summarize an OCT? That's what it is. It's one of the methods. Like I've got uh, intravascular ultrasound, which is kind of a rival these days. Right. Which doesn't use uh, light, but it uses sound. Right, sound. So the, yeah, like ultrasound. Ultrasound, the acoustic vibrations and acoustic waves goes through the sound. And so OCD is one of the methods of imaging. Yeah. But the problem with ultrasound is that in, in intravascular ultrasound, so the resolution a, thing. It's very low. The resolution. It's very low. It's just around 100 micrometers. It's 100. quite 100 micrometers. It's it's quite low because. If you talk about OCD, you can even distribute 10 micrometers or 5 micrometers of yeah. resolution. You can actually take things of 5 micrometers of length. But in OCD, the, uh, the ultrasound thing, the intravascular ultrasound, the least they have is 100 micrometers. Moreover, if you increase, if you want to increase resolution, you have to increase like sound frequency, right. which you can't do, then you have more interference and noises, and sound is more perceptible in noise mm -hmm. than light. Yeah, yeah. So, Yes, yeah, so, so researchers are these. I was just reading some papers regarding this in comparison of sound and OCD ultrasound. So you're saying in the future, as well as having X-rays, MRIs, PET scans, OCTs, is going to be another major way of imaging. And okay, that's right. Right. Good meeting you for hot chocolate. So you head off. Brilliant. Yeah. Cheers. Have more of these like informal conversations with other people because people might be interested in what's going around. Yeah, yeah. And, and if they are missing anything, sort of any time you uh, tune to your YouTube channel and they say, "Oh, what's Sen's talking about today?" Otherwise, it's a bit like it's too formal, you know, filming with big lights and all. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Piss bump. Ooh, that's good. Cheers.